So busy day for you folks at NOAA, I'm guessing. Um, I'm assuming this is uh, one of your most infamous and famous forecasts of the year that, you've, that you folks put out. Yeah, it's one of the, the more high, higher visibility outlooks, similar to like the hurricane seasonal outlook and also our spring outlook that we, we release in, in March, correct? Um, so maybe if we could just start out with uh, walking us through some of the main factors that you took into account this with this year's winter forecast. I'm assuming La Nina was chief among them. Yeah, correct. Uh, with the ex expectation of going into La Nina conditions uh, this winter um, was a was a major player in the, in the outlook. Um, we also made use of, of some of the other resources that we have, some of the short short range climate prediction models that we have, as well as uh, longer term temperature precipitation trends. But uh, the starting point was the expectation of La Nina conditions, even though with a weak event um, and the typical impacts that come from that. And maybe if you could just speak to before we get into your forecast, what is a typical what does a typical La Nina look like, you know, um, for the country and for the Northeast? And again, you said, I believe, a 60 percent chance of it emerging. So it's not a definitive thing at this point, correct? Correct. It's 60 percent uh, at this time for the, the current autumn season uh, does increase to 75 percent by the, the winter season, December, January and February. And typically, in a nutshell, generally warmer conditions along the southern tier, especially from the southern plains along the east coast, uh, the southeast and then along the eastern seaboard and generally cooler across the uh, much of the west um, parts of the Pacific Northwest and sometimes the, the northern plains region uh, precipitation wise generally dry along the south uh, in many in many areas for for the Boston or New England region uh, kind of in a, in a middle, middle ground area for, for precipitation but given um, for temperature um, due to longer term te positive temperature trends and La Nina impacts generally favoring above normal temperatures for the winter for New England and the Boston area. Okay, so I'm putting up your official seasonal temperature outlook now on the screen and we see if you could maybe just explain uh, the, you, you base your forecast on probabilities, and so, you know, New England, uh, southern New England is in sort of a higher probability of above average than, say, northern New England, and the, the probabilities drop off into the Midwest. Maybe if you could just sort of explain, sure. explain that a little bit. Sure. So, um, as you mentioned, we use a number of different factors, some more of the physical climate drivers, such as uh, ENSO, in this case, uh, weak La Nina. But also, as I mentioned, we have other forecast product guidance products that help us. And where we see uh, more overlap or more consistency or um, with respect to the various um, products that we have to help us prepare the outlook, uh, the probabilities are higher. Uh, and where that's not the case, the probabilities are, are lower. And so, in this particular case, um, we had more convergence of evidence, if you if you will, for slightly higher probabilities for southern New England and increasing as you go south into the, the mid-Atlantic and then and then the southeast. Whereas moving westward and northward, um, less agreement, more uncertainty and variability or changes within the season is expected until we get further out to the western northern plains and the Pacific Northwest, where we're actually favoring uh, below normal temperatures there. So it's kind of a convergence of uh, evidence of that a number of factors that, that determine the probabilities or the likelihood of either above or below normal temperature or above or below normal precipitation. Yeah, and speaking of precipitation, I, we have your uh, seasonal precipitation outlook up now. Um, New England kind of in a, the, the, yeah. the, the, the nether regions there, you've got above average in the Pacific Northwest and upper Midwest. Maybe just to speak a bit about your, your thoughts on the overall precipitation this winter. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a great question with respect to that. You're kind of in the no man's land with respect to typical impacts. And we didn't really have from La Nina, we didn't really have strong support uh, from some of the other factors that we consider to really be able to say something definitive about for the Boston area and parts of New England. So that's why you're in that equal chances area. Um, so the favoring of wetter conditions is, is to your is to your west and southwest towards the Ohio Valley because the storm track shifts uh, typically with the Nina further inland. So uh, it's usually drier and with less snowfall right along the coast for southern New England and the mid-Atlantic and wetter conditions for the Ohio Valley, for example, and the Great Lakes. So that's kind of why you're in that sort of battle, battle area between those two factors, two areas. Gotcha, gotcha. So the last two winters here in New England have been virtually snowless by our standards. Uh, 9.8 inches last year and just over a foot uh, the, the winter before. Um, 
What do you? I know it's hard to predict snowfall totals. Believe me, we try to do it to some extent every year, and it's 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 a t it's it's a tough uh, battle. But uh, any thoughts on? Could we? Ha I know a lot of folks have asked the question: Could this be our new normal? And I would say to that, I, I highly doubt it. But your thoughts on this year, given the the status of the atmosphere, La Nina, could this be another relatively snow snowless year in Boston? Yeah, great question. Uh, we've gotten that a lot. NOAA doesn't officially do, as you know, uh, snowfall outlooks, but I can comment on, on that. With La Nina, as I mentioned, with the storm track, um, typically a little closer to the coast or, or further or even inland, there tends to be warmer uh, the warmer water off the coast will bring temperatures a little bit higher for, say, Boston, the coastal areas, uh, and also the mid-Atlantic region. And so very often we'll see less snowfall with La Nina conditions for southern New England south, especially the mid-Atlantic region, because of generally warmer temperatures. For example, uh, many systems may start off with snow and then transfer to have more ice and even rain, depending on the situation. And so snowfall is typically below normal with uh, La Nina events in your area. Um, so it, it may be another year of, bo of below normal snowfall again. Last year was a very, for a very different reason. Uh, with the strong El Nino, we had just um, just per very persistent above normal temperatures for a lot of the, uh, of the country along the northern tier from the plains and Great Lakes to, to your area. And so a lot of the events were not snow events. And uh, there was quite a bit of a snow drought from the northern plains, Great Lakes, and even into northern New England there. So. Um, favoring a probably another lower than normal year, but for di very different reasons. Uh, and, and obviously the ski industry is a huge deal here in New England, uh, particularly up in northern, central and northern New England. Um, and just going by your forecast charts, it seems like perhaps, uh, I know you mentioned a lot of snow to rain situations possible in Boston, maybe northern New England uh, it could yep. fa favor a little bit better. They've had a, a rough couple of years here, frankly. Yeah, um, actually, snowfall is favored to be above normal in, in parts of like upstate New York and, you know, the Antarctic, Antarctic region, as well as northern New England, because it's typically cold enough to to snow most events there, even with uh, a storm track that may be a little bit closer, you know, inland or along the coast. So those areas um, actually have a, a above average snowfall signal for La Nina. It's more of the closer to the uh, I-95 corridor, and, you know, in the, in the metropolis areas where it's below normal. So there's some, there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel or some potential hope for those areas. Yeah, I think a lot of folks here will be glad to hear that forecast. Um, it's thoughts on the timing of winter this year. Um, does, an, does a La Nina favor an, an earlier start to winter, later finish, or just too difficult to say? Um, you know, the last couple of winters really haven't got going here until really yeah. after Christmas. Yeah, I mean, um, it's hard to say, uh, obviously, definitively, um, but typically with um, La Nina events, since we do favor uh, warmer temperatures, um, like you mentioned, things tend to uh, lag a little bit with the start of some of the more typical impacts of, of colder air outbreaks and, and snowfall. So it's, it would tend to lean that way, given La Nina and um, the other current things that we're seeing. But uh, as you know, that can change from uh, week to week once you get into the cold season, December and so on. But that would be what that's where I, the way I would hedge, maybe a little bit later. Okay, um, and maybe some of the other factors, obviously La Nina is the big one, but um, the, the oceans have been very warm, Pacific and Atlantic for uh, several months, if not a couple of years now. Um, that obviously adds uh, water vapor to the atmosphere. Do you foresee that um, affecting our winter at all, perhaps adding some mm -hmm. moisture to some of the storms, perhaps uh, maybe if we do get a couple snowstorms given the fact that there's more water vapor in the air, uh, maybe some heftier totals when it does when it does snow? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great point. Um, the, the, the ocean temperatures right off the coast are conservative above normal, and that's been a long-term trend, um, even along, just along the coastal area. So one of the reasons um, for the forecast there is because those temperatures have just been per perpetually above normal uh, due to longer-term, um, you know, positive temperature trends. And so typically, you know, it, does make less snowfall events per se, but uh, overall, if it you do have an air mass in which it is cold enough uh, to snow, um, those systems that are along the coast there can, uh, if it's far enough off the coast, can get very energized by the warmer water and moisture. And so you, you're correct. That's a, a very similar mechanism to El Nino events further south, where it may be warmer with less snowfall events, but when we get one, usually it's a, it's a one to two feet sort of storm. So um, not saying that for, for the Boston area, but in general, they, those storms can be energized with more moisture, as you, as you mentioned, um, 
overall. Yeah, it's a pattern we've been seeing here uh, over the last several years is, um, you know, we don't get as, it seems like we don't get as many storms, but when they come, they come all at once. And our winter could come down to literally uh, a 12 hour uh, patch of snow here. And, and three weeks later, another six hours of intense snowfall. It, it's, it's certainly become more extreme and much more variable. And of course, climate change playing a role in that. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts on other, fa other factors this year? Obviously, polar vortex has become a popular term in the media. Any thoughts on either that or some blocking up uh, in Greenland that may or may not exist? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, we, we know that um, with a weaker event, whether it be La Nina or El Nino, there tends to be more, um, like I said, variability or change within each month and the season. So it, it does make it more likely to have uh, variations in the jet stream to allow some colder outbreaks. Whether we have another very strong uh, warming in the stratosphere uh, to, to cause uh, one of those stronger events, it's unclear. It, that, the conditions we have now in the stratosphere and with the uh, ENSO state actually make that's a little makes that actually a little bit less likely compared to normal but certainly the the weak forcing from the tropics will make it um potentially possible to have more variability than we had last year because we had the very strong El Nino there was more persistence in warmer temperatures but we expect to see a lot more changeable weather this this winter overall and the only other thing I would mention which is out of your area but for the south uh, drought um, development is, is a concern with La Nina uh, from the southwest across the southern plains into the southeast uh, because of uh, potential uh, impacts from La Nina. That would be the only other thing I would I would mention. Yeah, sort of the opposite to what we had last year with El Nino, right? Where correct, the, those correct. areas were literally you can flip the map from a typical La Nina pattern to El Nino south to north. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, typical La Nina, lots of cold maybe building up in parts of Canada, western Canada, maybe. Um, Enable maybe that a couple of times that could spill down into New England, give us a couple of cold outbreaks. I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah, that's a, that's exactly what I mean by the, the the more changeable weather and variability is that that's going to happen a few times and uh, likely more than last year. We really only had a few, and that was more in the interior part of the of North America. With um, a non-strong El Nino like this, we're probably likely to see more of those sort of um, uh, air masses breaking off from the you know the polar jet stream. Um, but right now it's been uh, pretty warm across. Canada and so snowfall is actually below normal across much of the northern part of North America. That can change very quickly, as you know, but right now generally warmer. But if that does change, you're right, those air masses could um, break off and shift south into um, the north central and northeast part of the country. And that's one reason why we have lower probabilities for above normal temperatures and equal chances in some of those areas because of that uncertainty. And, and lastly, and this may be outside your area of expertise, it certainly is outside of mine. Um, I've been hearing about the snowfall building up early in Siberia this year already. And a lot of, I know a lot of winter forecasters look to Siberia and say if there's an early, if October is a snowy month, that could portend uh, colder and snowier times for us this, this winter. Any, any thoughts on that? I mean, that, that is definitely an ongoing research issue. That's definitely something that we've, we've heard as well um, with respect to more above normal um, snow cover and snow depth in Eurasia. Uh, however, that there's still a lot of uncertainty whether that really links to the eventual uh, winter conditions in North America. Um, that's more of an, in my opinion, more of an ongoing research issue that continues to be investigated. Okay. Uh Appreciate your time, John. Uh, again, John Gottschalk from the National uh, NOAA's Climate Prediction Center, um, forecasting uh, above normal chances of uh, above average temperatures and below average snowfall likelihood, at least in southern New England. But as you said, there's hope uh, for those that want to go skiing up north. Uh, any final thoughts, John, about whether it's New England or the country uh, as a whole this, this winter? No, I, I, think, I think we covered it. Just wanted to uh, thank you for having me again. Okay, uh, John Gottschalk from uh, the CPC. Uh, I guess from here we'll have to wait and see. Our, the WBZ weather team will have our own uh, winter prediction coming out later in November. Uh, again, this year going to be ruled by La Nina as well as a number of other factors. But everything at this point pointing towards probably another uh, below average winter for snowfall. Um, thank you for joining us uh, and stay tuned for that WBZ forecast coming up in a few weeks.